tonight for our cookie jar conversations. We're going to talk about integrity tonight, and that's kind of a hard subject, um, kind of a tricky subject. Tell us about it, girls. What do y'all think about integrity? Oh, I found it a tough subject, too, even though I know in myself what integrity is. It's a hard one to explain, to talk I think, about. sometimes. Yeah, to explain it, I okay. guess. I the way that I explain it and the way that I think about it is being what I say I am. Yes. Like what I am with you girls, mm -hmm. that's what I should be when I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like what I think of integrity. Um, an integral person is true blue honest at all times. Yes. I think it's um it's like knowing how someone will act given any given circumstance you can predict how they're going to react yes. because that's just their character that's who they are mm -hmm. and so that's what integrity means to me yeah. so yes yeah um proverbs 10 9 says whoever walks in integrity walks securely but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out um when i was in the fifth grade um all i wanted to do was be popular and so one day, um, the coolest, most popular, one of the most popular girls in our class, she just happened to get seated right across from my desk, which would mean that she was going to be my partner Part whenever we did anything in class. And so that meant that we graded each other's papers. And each Monday, we, were, we had vocabulary workbooks, you know, where you got your vocabulary list, and you had to learn what the definitions were and use them in context, in sentences, spelling. And, you know, spelling, mm -hmm. and, you know, fill in the blank, and multiple choice. And then on Thursdays, we would grade them in class because you're going to have a test on Friday. Right. And so we came up with this plan, and it, in our fifth grade minds, it was foolproof. Um, we would grade each other's papers, but we wouldn't necessarily count all the incorrect answers wrong. And if we didn't fill out, you know, a fill in the blank, we would just write in the correct answer for each other. And the best part of this plan was that when it came time to tell the teacher what our score was, um, she, you know, like if I'd only gotten 15 out of 20 correct, she would just report to the teacher, you know, that I had 18 out of 20. So it seemed like a win-win-win. Well, there you, you know. go. Yeah. But um, as time went on, I kind of started feeling guilty because I knew deep down this wasn't right. And I remember one night, you know, just kind of getting ready for bed and, and just having that sick feeling. And um, so I, you know, I stayed up late at night trying to reason with myself how I was going to get myself out of this chain. And so the only thing I could think of is I, you just have to stop. You have to put a stop to it. So the next Thursday rolls around, and we switch papers. And um, I graded her paper correctly time and I kind of remember her you know kind of what's going on you know what <laughs> happened and I know kind of sheepish, sheepishly I just kind of you know I don't, I don't want to do this I don't want to do this anymore I'm not going to do it just give me the grade I learned you know just you know just leave me alone because <laughs> I was afraid of being found out right you know and um, I learned several important things during this story um, the first thing that I learned is that it was easier for me to compromise the second and the third yeah. and the fourth time yeah. because I was so worried about covering up that first indiscretion. Right. And I was willing to do whatever I had to. But I woke up one day and I was on the wrong path and I wasn't really sure how I was going to get right. back to where I needed to be. Um, secondly is the, pe the people that are walking on this wrong path with you don't necessarily have your best intention, you know, your exactly. best. Um, um, and it was taking, um, and it would cost you to stand up because, yeah. you know, that girl didn't want to be my friend right. mm -hmm. after I had done this. And um, I had no, uh, during this, you know, I had no idea knowing if anybody else was doing it because to me it was just me and her that knew about this. But looking back, I suspect that the teacher kind of had her own suspicions and that, um, it wasn't too long after I had decided I wasn't going to participate anymore that she began to do a new thing herself. And she would have us switch with our partner and then switch with the partner and then switch, you know, so that you uh, never really knew who yes, was going to get yes. your, your workbook. Smart teacher. Smart teacher. Yes. 
And so, um, in her wisdom, I'm guessing she decided that she would teach the class as a whole a lesson rather than just having to call out independent students. But um, that means that just because the majority of the people are the cool kids, just because they're on the path that you are, it doesn't mean that it's right. And so Ephesians 5 says, follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, but among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Yes. So that's what I learned. And I, I love, love that. that. About integrity. That's yes. very good. I love very it. good. I did too. Um, I looked up the definition because I'm always, I, that's the first place I go when, even though in my mm -hmm. mind I knew what I was thinking, but uh, one of the definitions said that it's a firm adherence to a code of especially moral incorruptibility. And that goes right back to what, you know, you were talking about. Or the quality or state of being complete or undivided. So we're not being two people. We're being who we really are. Um, Job 2.3 says that the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him in all the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. And he still holds fast his integrity, he, although you have incited me against him to run him without cause. So even when he was even when Job was attacked, and sometimes we are attacked personally, but if we stand in what we've always, you know, known, um, I I think that's you know when we when we know that we are who we are, and I've always thought that even when I'm by myself, you know, that I'm really not by myself, that God is always with me, and um, it took me back to an episode of Leave It to Beaver and only those who are older will remember Leave It to Beaver. But there was an episode, and there was always a moral with, with those stories. I liked those. And uh, his mom was talking with him at bedtime, and he had gotten, you know, in trouble for doing something that was really out of his character. And she was telling him, she said, always remember that no matter what, even if you think you're by yourself and you're doing something that's not right, that there's always someone watching you. And he asked her, he said, do you mean God? And she said, yes, God. And he said, even through the roof? And she said, even through the roof. <laughs> God sees us, even mm -hmm. through the roof. Mm -hmm. I love those old quality yes. TV shows, don't you? Yes. Oh, when we lived in Arkansas, we had a um, a district superintendent that he preached a sermon at council one year. Um, he said he always ends his sermons with YBH, yeah, but how? So uh, when I was looking at this, living a life of integrity, how? Yeah, but how? How do you live a life of integrity? Um, there's three things. Um, that um, can contribute to yes, you're going to live a life or you're not. Your the, the past gets in the way. My past gets in the way. My willpower. I'll fix it. I've got the willpower. I'll change it. Mm -hmm. Ever been tried to diet? You know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we got number one. When we confess our sins. Jesus forgives us of our sins and forgets our past. Um, I looked up the, I thought about the woman that was brought to Jesus, you know, that had been found in adultery. Mm -hmm. And I sing that song, you mm -hmm. know. Let the first one, let the guilty one cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. everybody dropped their stones and went home. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, where's your accusers? Mm -hmm. And she said, I, I don't have any. She's, he said, neither do I condemn you. Then he told her, now go and don't do it no more. That's right. Get out of that. Yeah. we got to um, confess our sins. He'll forgive us our sins. But we can't go right back to it. That's right. If we work under our own power, which is the next one, under my willpower, 
I'll try to fix it and try to be good, but we're not without the power of God, we're just not going to be able to make it, and we'll just go back and do it again. Yeah. We will. And then there's the last one, the the past, the power, and then the plan. Lots of times I have my own plan. I can do this. I'll fix it. I'll yes. fix it. I've got a plan. But my plan is not going to work. Mm -hmm. I got to trust in the Lord's plan right. and let Him lead the way. And um, I got to looking in my book on integrity. And um, lots of times our life in the Bible is compared to a tree. Mm -hmm. Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scorners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. Its leaf will never wither. And whatever he does, he will prosper. Goes back to what we've been studying, the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. This kind of goes along with it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Like the tree, we're planted by the rivers of water. The, the roots is compared to um, the principles in our life. I looked at principles, that's the fundamental truths what we how we think what we believe in that's our roots the roots come up and they this trunk what the quality of a trunk of a tree that trunk carries the minerals that goes up into the branches that would be considered the trunk would be considered our values what we put our value in what our principles or what we have our, our what we believe in determines what our values are going to be right. you know our values are given minerals to the branches that we're putting out the branches are con, con, uh, considered our motives why why am i doing it you know uh, Go back to the values, the degree of importance with the aim of determining our actions. The values is would be what determines how we act. Mm -hmm. And then our, our motives would be why do we why do we act like that? These branches, the way that we're acting, our our motives for how we're acting is determining what kind of fruit we're going to be displaying. Uh -huh. That fruit that's displayed in our lives is our integrity. Right. You know. So it's all if if one is out of whack, they're all going to be out of whack. Right. That fruit's not going to be there if any of these are in the wrong path. If we have a, a wrong motive just for doing something nice for somebody, I'm going to get her something so I bought her a birthday present so because she expects it. You know, yeah. that's the wrong motive. Yeah. I bought you the birthday present because I love you. You know, um, but we can have a wrong motive doing something good for somebody. It's yeah. true. But um, that's what I, I believe integrity is. Mm -hmm. Always being honest behavior, the way we act and conduct ourselves, especially towards others. You know, but our our principles determines our values. Our values determines our motives. Our motive determines our behavior yeah. or our fruit. Yes, the fruit that we're we're putting off, and that is integrity. That is integrity. Yes. Thank you for joining us tonight. We love you.